Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan had moved forward to put me away. I drifted so far, would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time, but Jesus appeared and said, this one is mine. Now I'm safe from all harm, for he walked through the storm when he came looking for me. Hello and welcome to Addiction Free. I'm your host, Evangelist Candy Rose. And wow, am I excited. I'm in Pleasant Plains at the First Assembly of God here. This is Pastor Chad Carpenter's church, and this is a recovery roundup. Woo! Woo! And Dennis Markham here is, has brought this all together. Dennis, tell them what Brothers Keeper is. Uh, we're a 501c3 recovery ministry out of Batesville, Arkansas. And he puts together these kind of rallies. We have them. So get on Facebook, look up Dennis Markham, M-A-R-K-U-M, and watch for, for these and start coming out. And, and in a few minutes, I'm going to feature a few more groups that are here. Because let me tell you, don't think that you can't have fun being clean and sober, because it is fun. All right. Wow. Look at all these beautiful faces. This is John 317, and I'm going to let you talk to the leader here. I interviewed her a long time ago. Anyway, she's going to tell you what John 317 is and where they're at and how long a program it is. Hi, my name is Kim Matheny. I am with John 317 Ministry. We're a year-long faith-based rehab, and we are located right outside of Newport in Rimmel, Church of Rimmel, Arkansas. Thank you. All right, and if you need to, if you need help, there's one other, another place for you to check out. And this is Project New Start. Matter of fact, you've been seeing their promo at the end of every one of my TV shows because they're one of my sponsors, Pastor Tim and Leslie Bumpus. And she's going to tell you what Project New Start is about. Well, at Project New Start, we're a faith-based recovery. Uh, we uh, give treatment for many different reasons. We're located in Newport, Arkansas at the uh, New Life Church of God. Yay! All right. Woo! Well, friends, here is some more for you to hear what they're doing, what God is doing uh, through all of these different ministries. So I'm going to let the leaders just briefly tell you what ministry they're from and where they're at and briefly what they do. Still Arkansas, out toward Melbourne, um, with drug and alcohol addictions, abuse, depression, anything, you know, the women, homelessness. Um, and we also have a uh, Cowgirl for Christ ministry. Traley goes in and sings, and then we give our testimonies. And so uh, we just, it, anything that women need to help in their lives, we're there for them. A safe, godly home. Awesome. And you know what? Give me your card. Give me your card. And, folks, you know, on my website, I have a whole bunch of resources for you to find help for alcohol and drugs for men and for women. All right, and here's my friend Terry Regal and her husband Kyle there. She's going to tell you qu quickly what she does. I'm with Terry Regal Ministries. I travel and go in the prisons, go in the churches, wherever I need to speak, sing, deliver, interpret for the deaf. I'm all about choices that we make in life. Good choice, bad choice. It's your choice, so make good choices. And Jesus is the best choice you'll ever make. Hello, I'm Jody Davis with Overcomers Ministry. We meet at 615 on Wednesday evenings at uh, 4225 Newport Road in Rosie, Arkansas. Uh, we're under the umbrella of Maple Springs Missionary Baptist Church. Hey, and we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Amen. Hey, it. hey, Come on. hey, I tell you what, we're not at addicts anymore. Hey, we're, we're brand new in Christ. Amen. Amen. Hey, that's what we teach people. Amen. Woo. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll be interviewing him in a little bit. <laughs> All right, who else is? All right. Hi, I'm Rihanna Tilly. I'm representing the House of Faith out of Floyd, Arkansas. We are a nine-month female recovery home. We are brand new. And I just want you guys to know it's where God's grace is sufficient. All right. Yeah. Woo, 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 woo. All right. And we have the mayor of, of Augusta. 
Yeah, I'm Jeff Collins, the mayor of Augusta. I'm also the founder and CEO of Second Chance Ministry of Northeast Arkansas. We are a traveling ministry, thank you, and we go anywhere to proclaim the Word of God, to tell what God can do in an addict's life, because I am living proof of what God can do in an addict's life. And I'll be interviewing him, too. You'll hear his testimony. we get everybody? Woo! All right! Praise the Lord! Hi, my name is Jeff Collins, and I'm the mayor of Augusta. No, I wasn't always the mayor. I was an addict. I was lost for over 30 years to the world of drugs. I'm also the founder and the CEO of Second Chance Ministry of Northeast Arkansas. You know, God delivered me out of, out of death and meth into the ministry and into mayor. You know, there were so many, the years that have went by in my life, and all I could think of was the lives that I was destroying. And I wanted out of, I wanted out of addiction. I didn't know how to escape because I would not make the decision to, set my, to, go, to go to God. You know, I was a safe child of God at the age of 12 years of old. And I give myself to Christ. But at the age of 14, I was experimenting with marijuana. By the time I was 16, I was on the harder drug. And by the time I was 21, I was lost to meth and cocaine. And it was funny because I could see people in the town that were getting by doing these hard drugs. And they were wealthy and they were prospering. And the devil lied to me and said, son, you can have that. You can do that too. And so I took a, 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 a big home, a nice family and a business, a million dollar business that I had built my ground up, a trucking company. And I had lost it all to addiction. And on August the 16th of 2009, I lay on the table in a hospital. I was having a heart attack. And while I was having that heart attack, I flatlined. I stayed flatlined for six minutes and 21 seconds. You know, and, 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 and during this time, you see, I, before my, when I was lost in my addiction, I used to want to go to hell. I used to think that all the fun I was having on this earth that the devil had lied to me and said, this is the fun you will have in hell if you would just keep following me. So I kept pushing God further out of my life, and I wanted more devil into my life. I would drive by the church house and laugh at the people in the church because they was not having the fun that I was having. How could they be in there worshiping an imaginary figure when the, God, when the devil was telling me all the fun that I could have? He was lying to me, telling me that God was not real. And so there I am, laid on the table, August the 16th of 2009. I had done destroyed everything I had. I'd done lost everything I had. I had nothing else. I'd lost my business, my family, everything I had. And I and going to the to the world, I was lost and I was gone forever. I was nothing. And laying on the table, I had been flatlined for six minutes and 21 seconds. The doctor had been shocking me for over four minutes. And he turned to the nurse and said, let's write him up. Let's write his cash his chips in. He's gone. But something told him to shock me one more time. And you see, during that time, God had led me to the gates of hell and showed me what real hell was. See, he uses, he uses people like me all through the Bible. He uses the, the worst of the worst to tell the story. So he had me, and I was a saved child of God. And he said, son, if you'll cry out to me, I will release you from these chains of addiction. And I cried out to God at that moment. I said, God, save me. And God did save me. He woke me up. He put life back through that doctor's hands into my body. And he shocked me one more time into the amazement of everybody. He arose on that table again, and I was live. And I told God that night on the table, if you would just help me from my addictions, if you would just help guide me out of my addictions, I will serve you. I will tell anybody about you that wants to hear the word of God and what it can do to a lost man like myself. And I took, and, and God said, son, I'm going to give you life. And I, when I opened my eyes and he gave me a freedom of addiction, I didn't know how to pray that night. I had forgotten how, but when I cried out to God, he relieved me of my addictions. I don't know what it feels like to be a, a, an addict right now. I don't know what it feels like to want to go get high anymore. You know, and I'm going to tell you something, guys. There's nothing that cannot be done by the love of Christ. See, I was unworthy. I was the most worthy person of death on that table, but I was, and I was unworthy of God's love and saving grace, and he gave it all to me back that night. And I praise the Lord, and I thank God so much because to this day, I am the mayor of Augusta. I am the founder of a ministry, and I give back to a world I had took so much from. And I'm going to tell you something. God can release you if you will drop to your knees and you will give it all to God because I'm going to tell you, God, is the one step that will set you free. Thank you, God. My name's Nikki, and I'm a delivered child of God, and I'm with uh, Celebrate Recovery in Pleasant Plains, Arkansas. And this is my best friend, Tammy, and this is Corey, and this is my husband, Scott. And um, I was a, a meth addict for 19 years, and uh, through a faith-based recovery house in uh, Newport, Arkansas, I was delivered by God, and I have been clean ever since. I've been clean for four years, and we have been running, uh, Tammy and I have been running Celebrate Recovery in Pleasant Plains for uh, two years now, and God has restored uh, my marriage. Me and Scott have been off and on for 
16 years through a terrible drug addiction, and now he's been delivered and set free for almost two years, and we are remarried, and our family is all back together, and we are uh, just living for God and trying to serve the Lord and uh, teach others that there is, a, and give them hope that there is there is life after addiction. Thank you. My name is Tammy Bailey, and um, I'm a delivered child of God. I'm clean from a, two and a half years clean from a 21 year plus meth addiction. Ask God to take it from me and praise God that he did. And uh, Nikki and I do celebrate recovery together. And Corey, he helps us too. I'm Corey Benton, and I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. And I am a step study leader and a small group leader. And anything that they need me to do. Um, I just, I know I have a servant's heart because this is all about Christ. And it's not about us. It's about Jesus Christ and helping the newcomer and uh, just making them feel comfortable. Um, in our church and in our uh, in our lives. Uh, I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. My name is Tommy. Uh, I struggle with uh, mental health issues and uh, chemical abuse. Uh, this is Jeremy, and this is Christy, and we are a part of Celebrate Recovery Broken Chains. Um, let's see where to start. Um, okay, um, I moved here into Arkansas from New York when I was about eight years old. I moved out in the middle of nowhere. Um, I got bullied a lot as a child. Uh, at 13 years old, my mother decided she didn't want to be a mother anymore, kicked me out on the streets. So at 13, I was living on the streets of Hot Springs, um, in and out of children's homes, um, until they finally wouldn't even let me back in those. Uh, I met my wife when I was, um, I was 19, and uh, I eventually adopted her children. Um, in 2003, we lost our son. He was 19 years old. Uh, he passed away. Um, during all of this, from the time I was 13, um, I started with, with drinking and then smoking weed, and um, it led to uh, 25 years of, of meth abuse and, and uh, meth cooking. And um, some, for some reason, the Lord kept me out of prison and, and kept me out of harm's way. I'm, I'm so grateful now. I didn't understand it then. Um, but... Uh, my wife decided one day that she uh, she had heard of this place called Celebrate Recovery, and um, so I just went just to check it out, and um, I didn't really care for where we had went, and so she found another one, and uh, we went there, and the, the love in that place was just so um, unbelievable, and at the time, I didn't realize that it was the love of Jesus, but eventually, after a few relapses and just keep going back and going back because we always say keep coming back and it's a cliche but it's it's it, it's real it's real because I was oh, I was relapsing in the parking lot I was relapsing in the bathroom with Celebrate Recovery it didn't matter I still went and finally um, finally one morning in the middle of the night I got on my knees I was at home and I and I um, I asked Jesus into my life and 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 I asked him to please just take this from me and and I know you hear it all the time, but it's true. He took it from me. I checked myself in somewhere so I could get some help with my mental health issues. And that was January 7th of uh, 2016. So I just celebrated three years off of alcohol. And I'll be 10 years in August off of uh, hard drugs, meth. Um, thank you, Jesus. Um, and the, just the love and everything in that place is, is in Celebrate Recovery. It's just it, when people say they love you, they mean it. It's it's not fake, and it, it, all I can say is Jesus. That's it. It's got to be the love of Jesus because it, it can't be anything else. And um, so, in 2016, we we uh, I joined Broken Chains, which is the biker side of Celebrate Recovery. CR in the Wind. We're a group of bikers and bike enthusiasts that uh, that have found hope and healing through Jesus Christ and Celebrate Recovery. And we're out here to let people know that change is possible. So. Um, if you see us riding around or whatever, just stop and I will be glad to tell you more or anything. If you need help with anything, you just look up Broken Chains. You can look me up, Tommy. Uh, you look Jeremy up. Any of us, we'd be glad to help you, talk to you, even if you just need somebody to listen because we love you, even though we don't even know you because Jesus said so. Thank you. Awesome. You going to be talking, Jerry? This is exciting. <laughs> I love this. Yes, and I, I interviewed uh, Jerry not long ago. You've probably seen her on my TV show. But anyway, Jerry, you want to tell what Chrissy's House is? Sure, I do. Um, hi, we're Chrissy's House of Recovery. We're a faith-based uh, recovery group. We're in BB, Arkansas, 
our mission, our motto is to be an agent of change, to help others get back on their feet and recover their life. And our, um, our motto is where your addiction becomes your past, not your future. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, your past, not your future. All right. Okay, y'all, thank you. Hi, my name's Amanda Wood. Um, well, I grew up in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I was born and raised there after I graduated. I had moved to Mountain View. Um, when I was 14, you know, I started doing drugs, smoking pot, and drinking on the weekends, but then it went to acid and ecstasy. Um, you know, I made it through school, but barely. I wasn't really trying. And then uh, I moved to Mountain View. Um, you know, partying, it was just my lifestyle. It wasn't... It wasn't, it was just how we lived. I didn't really know anything different. I grew up that way, so that's just how it was. Um, my boyfriend at the time, he'd gone to RPF. I met him while he was out on bail. He went to RPF for nine months, and while he was gone, I just kind of went off the deep end because, you know, I didn't have him. And uh, I didn't really know God. My mom had found God and made us go to church when we were in Florida when I was a teenager, but we'd sleep through the services and um, we weren't even allowed to sit by him because my brother would snore. Um, but I never had surrendered my life to him, like really surrendered my life. So my hus my boyfriend, he had gotten out of RPF. He had found God while he was in there um, and baptized. When he got out, we got married. And then things just got really bad, you know. Um, I would leave and I would come back. Our marriage was just in shambles. We hated each other. And uh, I ended up, I was on pain pills because I would rolled a vehicle and hurt my back and I was on pain pills really bad and I worked seven days a week to buy my pain pills to work seven days a week. I was a slave and I didn't know it. Um, I heard a sermon one time that Joey Cook told and he said that Harriet Tubman, she was a conductor on the Underground Railroad and she got to her freedom and she would go back and she would help other slaves escape. She said, um, I helped free a thousand slaves and I would have helped free a thousand more if I could have convinced them that they were slaves. And it just, it rocked me. You know, for days, I just couldn't believe I was a slave. I was a slave to my addiction, and I didn't know it. You know, I just, I didn't know I was blind also. Well, um, I started shooting up methamphetamine, and my life just spiraled out of control even worse. I was hurt by the church. Someone told me I was an embarrassment to my family and my church because um, they heard I had gone to the hospital for pain pills, and it just, it just got, pushed me way far away from Jesus. But now, you know, I'm actually grateful for this because if I would never gone through the hell that I went through, I wouldn't know Jesus like I do. But uh, I had actually had a crazy experience. I went around for a year totally out of my mind. I was thinking people were trying to kill me. I was thinking I would pace back and forth. forth. I would stay awake for days without drugs, begging for rest and begging for sleep. And a whole year I went around like that. And then one day... I had gone to jail for 15 days, and when I got out, we started going to Save by Jesus in Mountain View, Arkansas, which is actually now the recovery group that I helped to serve at. It's Believer's Recovery now. Um, and I had uh, unclean spirits cast out of me at the front of a church one day, and I didn't know that was real. I didn't know, like, exorcism is a real thing, but I had allowed these things into my life. I went up to the front of a church, and Jesus saved me. He came into my heart. He gave me a new heart. He took my heart of stone and gave me a heart of flesh, and he put his spirit within me. And now I go out proclaiming the gospel. I go into jail, into the jail in Mountain View, and I tell the girls there, I get to see blind eyes open. I get to see dead people come to life in Jesus. I get to see lives change, and I just pray. That's my prayer, that I can continue to do this as long as I can. I just want to serve him with everything I have. I want to love God and run towards him with everything I've got. Run after him like you did with your addiction. And I'm telling you, if you will surrender your life to him, he will give you everything that he has because we become heirs with him and everything he has is ours. Well, friends, once again, you've heard some wonderful testimonies from several of the guests tell about what Jesus made the difference in their lives. And my friend here, Pastor Tim Bumpus, he is the founder of Project New Start and he has other ministries. Uh, I'll let him tell you a little bit about that, but I want him to share his testimony briefly with you and then He's going to lead you in a prayer to give your life to Jesus. Because after watching all these testimonies, you can see the devastation that it has brought. But you see the, how the restoration and the peace and the joy and the purpose happen 
once they gave their life to Christ. And that's what's happened with him because now you've had purpose and you've got that joy. So here, Pastor, I want you to just uh, look into the camera and tell the folks what your life was like briefly and then lead them in a prayer to the Lord. Yeah, over uh, in 1994, uh, I'd hit rock bottom and uh, meth, drugs, and uh, I got put in jail. I was arrested. There, uh, I went to I done a year in jail, done a year in prison. Then I went to rehab, and um, God changed my life. I I went from the prison to the palace, prison to the pulpit, and uh, I began to preach in the jails and uh, nursing homes. And God called me to start a ministry. Uh, God helped me at my lowest point in life, so. Now, in return, uh, I run a treatment center for men and for women. We also have a youth home for young ladies, underage ladies that do drugs and have been abused and neglected, New Life Children's Home. So uh, I owe God my life. I owe him everything. Uh, he rescued me. He, uh, he, he rescued me from the gutter, and now it's my job to try to help as many as I can find Jesus. Um, I want to pray with you if you're out there and you need uh, uh, you need Jesus in your life. Uh, he's the only cure. He's the only hope. He's the only help. Uh, so I want to pray with you. Uh, if you truly repent and you believe in your heart, uh, you will be saved. So today... You know, people try everything. They try medication. They try psychiatrists. They try everything. But Jesus is all those things put together. And uh, so if you would, just uh, bow your heads. If you're sincere and you want to serve the Lord, bow your head out there and uh, just pray with me. Oh, Lord, we thank you for this time that we got to spend with you today, that you woke us up and you smiled upon us. I pray, God, for all those listening and all those struggling with addiction. I pray for them. God, come into our hearts. Forgive us for our sins. Heal us of all of our problems. Father, I accept your Son as a Lord and Savior. Now, God, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to love you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo, awesome. All right, now you said that prayer and you really meant it and you're willing to leave that old lifestyle, let me tell you, you are on a journey now that, yes, you're still going to have problems, but I'm telling you what, you're going to be aware that he's there for you. So call somebody, tell them that you gave your life to the Lord, get in the church, read your Bible, and talk to the one who loves you and died for you, Jesus. I'll see you next time. This is Pastor Tim and my lovely wife, Leslie. Uh, we pastor New Life Church, but we also run Project New Start Recovery Homes. Uh, these are homes designed to help men and women overcome addiction, bondages. We deal with any type of bondage that there is. We've been doing this for 20 years. God has just uh, literally changed lives through faith in Jesus Christ. Give us a call at 870-523-8413. God bless. Addictions. Addictions of all types are killing precious people. Overdose of opioids is on the rise. Prescription drugs and alcohol cause families to be torn apart. Everyone suffers, including the children, especially the children. If you or a loved one want help, go to addictionfaithprograms.com to find faith-based resources. There is help. There is hope. Greetings in Jesus' name. Teen Challenge Women's Ministries has now changed its name to Adult and Teen Challenge of the Greater South. Why? Well, first of all, we're no longer just women. We have a men's center in Russellville, Arkansas. And of the Greater South, we've opened our fifth state. We are a faith-based recovery program. But first, it starts with a conversation. You reaching out. The only requirement to get in, absolute requirement to get in, is a desire to change. Hello, I'm Gary Jennings, founder of the Ark of Praise Church and the Father's House. Uh, 
Father's House program is a residential home for men and women struggling with life controlling problems. We call our program a Christian discipleship program. We're very uh, much about Jesus Christ and we feel like he is the solution to helping people heal their hearts and change their lives and restoring families. Hi friends, this is Candy Rose, TV host of Addiction Free. My church, the Ark of Praise, and I would like to introduce our pastor, Gary Jennings. Him and his wife, Danette, are the founders of a recovery home, the Father's House. And we'd like to present his CD, You Chose to Be My Friend. And his friend, Gerald Crabb, produced the CD using his songs. And all proceeds will go to the Father's House. To receive your copy, go to thearcofpraise.org. I'm Richie and Carly Willis, and we just want to tell you we both were in major addictions in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We both come out of major, major drugs and major, major addictions. We just want to tell you that today we have men's homes in Hot Springs called Solomon's Porch. There's three homes for men. Uh, we have our own church today, 411 Highland Street, called Highland Street Revival. We have a roofing company today called Willis and Son Roofing. We have crews working for us and people in the office, and we're just thankful. I'm Lisa Haynes, Clinical Director for Shalom Recovery Centers. Shalom Recovery Centers is a nine-month Christ-centered program. We provide services for both men and women, and we seek to serve those looking for help with life-controlling issues and addiction. The Harbor Home is really a house of miracles. It is located in a small church in central Arkansas, in Conway, Arkansas, and it's a faith-based program anywhere from six months to one year, uh, residential for women coming out of drug and alcohol addiction. We have women of all ages that come to the Harbor Home and from all over the United States. And it really is a place where people can come, get down to the real root cause of the issue, our first six months is a time of healing, a time of reflection, and really an opportunity for you to come to realize your value and your worth, and uh, really to develop and cultivate a real relationship with Jesus Christ, which we believe is the answer for all addictive behaviors. I need to hear somebody testify. I need to hear somebody say you were lost and at the bottom, and you could not find your way, just when life had lost all meaning, and you wish that you could die, Jesus came to you that day, you invited him to stay. I need to hear somebody testify If you confess with your mouth that he is Lord And believe with all your heart that he was raised God made a promise And you can take him at his word You'll be saved You'll be saved 